Breaking news, the final countdown is on for a historic space mission with Hawthorne based SpaceX providing the first privately built spacecraft to take the astronauts into orbit. This is a live look at the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And as we await the launch, I'm joined via Skype by author and former NASA engineer Olympia Lapointe. Thank you so much, Olympia, for joining us. We were just talking before we came on about how exciting this is. You've been in the control room before, before these launches. What kind of checklist issues are the engineers taking a look at right now? Oh, it is a pleasure to be on the show today. We are all excited. This is a first time launch for SpaceX to see if they can actually launch humans into space. Now, looking at the time frame before launch, there's a lot of things in which engineers will be checking out. Uh, there are approximately 12 hours of check and stands and making sure people are safe before the launch and they're going to be looking at the valve timing they're going to be looking at if the pneumatic sequencing and the pressure sequencing in the valves are actually letting out and holding in certain type of gases they're going to be looking at the pressure in the suits of the astronauts and engaging that they're going to want monitor how the electronic equipment works within the the uh vehicle there's so many different aspects including the test stand they're going to be looking at how the test stand is holding up with this particular launch in place. So uh, the engineers right now are doing a fabulous job yeah. on making sure that two human beings are actually going to be successful in launching. And we have two astronauts that are going up into outer space today. Artificial intelligence, which is the new type of machine learning and large language models, is simply a tool. It's like the printing press mm. for calculations, patterns, and numbers. And although AI is very powerful and it is an opportunity for us to get great information, it's human minds that will be able to check the information and verify it's accurate. And I, I am so thankful that the movie Hidden Figures has come out mm. because we see individuals like myself, uh, like Katherine Johnson, and, and for the actresses that play in Hidden Figures, we see individuals highlighting science and technology, engineering and mathematics, and letting people know that through this education, we can do anything that we want to do. All right, also there's a lot of debate these days over artificial intelligence and how advancements in technology can be a double-edged sword. And we talk about AI so much. Yeah, and coming up, an award-winning rocket scientist, a real rocket scientist from NASA is gonna be joining us to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of artificial intelligence. But first, so the technology of artificial intelligence is something that we talk about on a weekly basis here on I Good think, Day LA. And even sometimes I think more than that. Yeah. Things are just moving so fast, everybody. It's hard to get all the facts on it. If it's good, if it's bad, sometimes it feels like you have to be a rocket scientist just to figure it out. But well, we're in luck today because joining us now is Olympia Lapointe who helped design rockets for 28 <gasps> NASA shuttle missions. What? That's First amazing. All, I've never met a real life rocket scientist before. So thank you so much for being <laughs> until on Until now. Delay. Yes, <laughs> until now. Thank wow. you. Well, it's my honor to be here and to explain this. I am a rocket scientist. I helped launch 28 space shuttle missions wow. to space and the founder of AnswersUnleashed.com. So I explain science in a very easy to understand way. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so for those of us who don't really have that like firm grasp on what AI is, um, how do AI systems work? Uh, artificial intelligence is a fast calculating system. Now there's different types of artificial intelligence. What more than likely you've seen in the news recently is generative AI. This is a type of AI that creates uh, videos, false fake videos yeah. and uh, content. Now it's different than the traditional AI that is more of cybersecurity and finding patterns mm -hmm. and looking at things mathematically. And it's different than the predictive AI, mm -hmm. which is used for uh, stock markets, medical type of technology and, and making sure people are safe with their data. That's been around for years. Yes, yeah. yes. But this new type of of generative AI is causing a stir <laughs> among a lot of people because it is a new type of technology in which a lot of officials are suggesting should be regulated. For example, the US airports around 20 
to 29 airports right now are using artificial intelligence to identify people at checkpoints. So the United States government is creating a draft of an artificial intelligence bill to help protect people's identities in these type of situations. Oh, that's super interesting. I hadn't heard about that. You say the human brain, though, will always be faster than AI. Is that true? Yes, yes. A lot of people will argue that artificial intelligence is going to have a mind of its own, is going to be running away with your information. And I'm actually here to tell you that's not true because the human brain is far more expansive than any artificial intelligence. For example, one dendrite in the human brain contains as much information as the entire World Wide Web. And we have millions and millions and millions of these dendrites in our brain. And humans are the ones creating the artificial intelligence large language models. So it's not some hocus pocus person. It's not some hocus pocus with artificial intelligence. No, it's actually engineers that are creating the large language models for these patterns to be recognized in artificial intelligence. Intelligence. The Biden administration, though, just rolling out their most advanced order yet surrounding tech security. Um, do you think these regulations go far enough? Actually, yes, and it's surprising. Uh, the United States government, the White House, has been looking at artificial intelligence for several years because that is a key player. The people who are able to have the new type of generative AI, the the type of traditional AI and the predictive AI, the people who can really just really handle that are the key people who can uh, keep systems safe or um, uh, avoid hacking. So what we want to do is really pay attention to this particular executive bill. Uh, the bill now has five layers to it that keeps information safe. And one of the layers is privacy. And one of the layers is notification. So within these layers, the executive order identifies that we have the ability to have our privacy uh, kept and thankfully, we have this in the United States. Other countries are actually going to follow. The second key aspects about this particular executive order is that we can have notification, just like we go to websites and that we're notified that cookies are on the website. They're capturing our information for, for marketing purposes. We have now the ability to have artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence run programs tell us when our information is going to be brought to death other places. And so we can opt out of that. So this particular bill is all encompassing. And I really have a, a great deal of faith on how it's going to play out. But what makes the eclipse so special? Joining us now to discuss is the author of Answers Unleashed and former NASA rocket scientist Olympia LaPointe. Olympia, thank you for being with us as a renowned rocket scientist. How awesome is that? Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, you're a rocket thank scientist? You. you can say <laughs> yes. How have you been prepping for this eclipse? Will you actually be going out to try to see it? Uh, that is a great question. Solar eclipses actually happen quite frequently, but it depends on where you're located. This particular annular eclipse is going to happen in the western part of the United States. And what I'm doing is preparing our, our audience to know what to look for and how to protect themselves when they look at the particular eclipse. Uh, we're going to see this annular eclipse uh, come from the Oregon area and pass through uh, the southern uh, part of the United States, Texas, and it's going to be a quite a fascinating event. And I'm getting on TV programs, just informing the public of exactly what to expect. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we're, it's now being called the Endeavor, right? In, in honor of, of course, one of the most famous missions in, in uh, NASA's history. Yes. Endeavour was one of the orbiters of the space shuttle program, and that was the program in which I worked on from 1998 to 2007 as a rocket scientist. And in my books, Ma Answers Unleashed and Mathophobia, I talk about Endeavour and I talk about the space shuttle program. And that name in itself resonates with innovation. And so the astronauts decided to name this new launch and this new vehicle Endeavour to honor the space shuttle program and to honor innovation as we see it in 2020. We are back. People may say your past determines your future, but my next guest says you can choose your future with targeted decision making. Mm -hmm. Who am I talking about? Rocket scientist and author of the book, Answers Unleashed to the Science of Attracting What You Want. Mm -hmm. Olympia LaPointe joins us. Welcome, Olympia. How you doing, Hi, Olympia? how are you? We're, we it don't have so a rocket well. scientist on every day. I know. You say that you can attract the life you want with quantum deciding. 
That sounds so analytical and so deep and so, what is that? Quantum deciding is the six decisions that we each make for the future that we want. And it requires us to actually go into the future, see what we want, go in the past, observe what we've ex experienced, and actually come to the present moment and make six key decisions so we start building the future that we want for ourselves. Release, release, release. Clean release. A view into the future of space flight for the masses as a billionaire travels to the edge of outer space and back. People understanding about science and technology and how that contributes to not only space travel, but the solutions for climate change, the understanding of how to use these science and technologies to uh, solve our world's most pressing problems. I want you to walk through the criteria for this flight tomorrow on the pre-launch space briefing that we received yesterday from Blue Origin. They said weather uh, was ideal. As of now, this uh, rocket is still planning to launch at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Yes, yes, there is pre-flight checks that's on board. And although this is an autonomous rocket, meaning that the rocket flies itself into that boundary of space, this is very still very crucial. There has to be checks and balances with the pneumatic sequencing, making sure the valve timing is correct with all the different fluids and gases that will be in the particular engine. You have to verify that there is not any severe vibrations within the engines that could cause a uncontained explosion. So there are different checks and balances within their computerized system to verify that this launch actually is successful. All right, good to see the two men embrace. Bezos, a longtime lover of space as well, we know. And here to talk about today's launch from Blue Origin is former NASA rocket scientist, Olympia LaPointe. Olympia, thanks so much for coming on the show. What is your reaction to today's mission? Oh, well, today's reaction and my reaction to today's Blue Origin mission is, thank God everything worked out successfully and there, there was a successful launch. Space travel in itself is inherently risky. And for William Shatner to go into the boundary of space and come back down in one piece successfully on this particular Blue Origin launch is a tremendous feat. And all of us across the world are happy that individuals are safe during space launch. Mm -hmm.